tidy, 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 pivot, pivot, pivot. I'm falling and I'm taking my time with my data set. Welcome. Today we're talking about tidy data and pivoting. Who'd have thought? So, introduction to pivoting and tidying. So, we would like data to come in a particular format. That would be nice, where, just like in this graphic, each column represents a variable, and each row represents an observation, and each cell represents a value. So when this is the case, we call the data tidy as opposed to messy. And by the way, we've been using the tidyverse for a long time. Guess where it gets the name tidyverse from this idea, tidy. And the whole idea is once your data are tidy, it becomes super easy to analyze the data. And until they're tidy, it becomes a nightmare. Because sometimes your data come in quite different from tidy data. So you might, for example, have the same variable stored in separate columns. Like in this situation where you have control and treatment. They're both measures of depression in this case but they are in separate columns. There are two common situations that you will probably run into where you have non-tidy data. One is the one that I just showed you, where you have, for some reason, somebody separated the control and the treatment group into two different columns, or maybe group one, group two, and group three. And the reason some people do this is because I believe, if I remember right, SPSS requires it to be in that format, which is what we call wide format. Why wide? Because you have taken what normally would be stacked or long and put them in a separate column, which has made your data set wider. The second situation you might run into is when you have repeated measures data. So as an example, you might have a data set that looks like this, where you have depression but it's measured at four different time points. So depression one, depression two, depression three, depression four, stress one, stress two, stress three, and stress four. So in either situation, you have non-tidy data and it needs to be tidified in order for you to be able to analyze it. So how do we make our data tidy? Well, let's jump right into R and find out. Well, that was fun. Woo, what a ride. All right, well, we're in R, having a blast here. I'm going to start by reading in the depression underscore t-test data set. And by the way, if you want to follow along, the link is in the description. And first thing I'll do is do that head thingy just to make sure it read in OK. And of course, as we see, we've got the control column and the treatment column, and we have depression scores spread out over two columns, as it should not be. And it's also missing another variable, which is the treatment group variable. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the pivot longer function. And what the pivot longer function is designed to do is it's designed to take a variable that is spanning multiple columns and put them all into one column. And as before, if you want to access the documentation, you could always put question mark and then the name of the function. In this case, that is pivot underscore longer, and it will bring up the documentation. We're not going to do that now because I know the documentation. All right, delete that just to clean up my workspace. And so the pivot longer has four required arguments. Number one, data. That's the easiest. You just input your data set, whichever one that you want to format from wide to long. That's all. Easy. The second argument is calls. And that is the columns in your data set that represent the same variable. So if we were to look at this data set again, we've got depression spanning two columns and the column names are going to be control and treatment. And so for the calls argument, we're just going to specify control and treatment. And then we have names underscore two. This is the name of the new column you're going to create. And really, it doesn't matter what you put in there. In fact, you could leave it blank and R will guess for you what you want the name to be. Um, but when thinking about naming it, it might be helpful to ask yourself, OK, in what way are the columns spread out? Are they spread out by treatment group like we had here? Or maybe they are spread out by time like they are here. If they're spread out by time, you might you might want to call that variable time. If they're spread out by treatment condition, we might want to call it condition or something like that. 
Uh, and then values underscore two, that is the name of the variable that is currently spread out. So in our example, we have control and treatment, but those are all measures of depression. So the values two is probably gonna be depression or something similar to that. And so if we were to take all that together, we would have the following code. Long underscore t test is equal to pivot underscore longer data equals wide underscore t test, which is what we called our data set. And then calls, again, we are specifying which columns the variable is spread out over, which in this case is control and treatment. And then the names too is treat, which is short for treatment. Again, you can call this whatever you want. And here I have a question, why is it in quotes? So you might be inclined to just say names two equals treat. Well, if you do that, R is gonna look for a object called treat and it's not gonna be able to find it. And so it's gonna throw you an error. So you need to put it in quotes to tell R that you are naming it treat. And then values two equals DEP for depression. And if we were to run that line of code and then look at it, we now see that we have a new data set that is really basically the old data set. It's just formatted differently. So we now have a column called treat and a column called depression or DEP. Now, just to show you exactly or make it a little more clear what's going on, I'm going to change this from treat to treatment and then this from depth to depression. And what do you think is going to happen? Hopefully you will guess that that will happen. That treat becomes treatment and DEP was changed to depression, which is now our new column name. That's all. Easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, freezy cheesy. And that is the very basics of pivoting. And again, pivoting means that we take a variable that is spread out over two columns and then put it into one column. Fun, fun. Well, that was fun. That was really fun. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. I had fun. Did you have fun? We had fun together. This is great. So let's go ahead and review our learning objectives for the short video before we talk about more complicated examples in the next video. So learning objective number one, understand what tidy data are. Again, tidy data means that each variable is stored in one column and each observation is stored in one row. Objective number two. Two reasons we would have to use pivoting. The first reason is if you have a data set where somebody has separated each group into two different columns or three different columns or however many groups you have. Very common when you're migrating from SPSS to R. And the other reason is when you have uh, a variable that was measured over time and those are represented in different columns. And then number three, the three, let me change that. I wrote three, I meant to say four. There we go, I make mistakes and I learn from them. So four arguments for pivoting. The first argument is the data set. The second argument is the columns that contain the spread out variable. The third argument is the names to argument or what is the name of the grouping variable. And then finally values two, which is the name of the values. So those are learning objectives. And to practice, here's what I recommend. Uh, I have linked in the description the Get Fit dataset, which is uh, simulated data about three different diets for weight loss. And they are currently in wide format. So your job is to practice and convert those to long format. And by the way, one of my frustrations recently is I cannot embed R code <laughs> in the description because uh, YouTube won't allow me to do greater than or less than symbols. And so I can't do the pipe operator. Go figure. So instead, I will leave a link to this document that I'm using so you can see the answer yourself. Yeah, I think that's all I gotta say today. So in the next video, we will talk about more advanced pivoting. See you then, peace out.